Coming up right now, see why an Ohio English teacher could lose her job for using sick days. You won't believe what happened and where she went. <laughs> also coming up, a new California bill would let employees ignore messages and calls after hours from the boss. Will other states follow? A little bit later on, a New York City restaurant charges $28 for a single chicken nugget, but with a very well, odd twist. All right, Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I am Mitch English and we're welcoming you to a Tuesday edition of Daily Flash. So glad to have you mm -hmm. along uh, with us. And let's check in with Matt Dooley. Hey, Matt, what's our word of the day? What's the word we need to get into our, our lexicon, our vocabulary? Fartlek. Fartlek? Fartlek. Oh. Am I saying that correctly? This is the activities runners do when they change between sprinting and jogging. Oh, well, of course, yes. Fartlek. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Now you know, use that in a sentence. Um, sometime today, uh, and the correct way would be nice. Too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? it would be. Uh, it's been a, a week and, and change since the solar eclipse. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. Did you did you partake? I, I had to go to the um, to, to the dentist. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We said, do I partake? It's a whole went way over my head. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I was headed to the dentist. Uh, and uh, I was inside the dentist, and they had film on the window, so I really couldn't tell outside. Oh, so, okay. so yes and no. All right. Well, we were last minute, but we were able to find some of those eclipse glasses. Okay. And, and now it's after the fact. It's sort of like, well, what do you do with these eclipse glasses? Oh, yeah. Do you throw them away? Do you keep them? What do you do with them? Because the next big total eclipse is in 20 years, <laughs> and Florida is right in the main uh, path of one? the next one, okay, so good. we will experience total darkness. So there's a couple things that you can do with these eclipse glasses. Okay. Donate them. Warby Parker is working alongside another company that deals with um, educating uh, students around the world about astronomy. So they've got something set up in their stores if you nice. want to donate your glasses. But the other thing is you can keep them because they don't expire. So you can oh, hang true. on to them <laughs> for the next eclipse. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So if you have uh, 20 years, uh, yeah. I guess you'd be able to do it. But I mean, you might be traveling, and they, there's eclipses, solar eclipse happens. Yeah, yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. And f to make a donation, at least they could send it to maybe the countries that might exactly. be a little less important. No, I like and, that idea. and rather than throwing them directly into the garbage can, they suggest that you cut out the film that is in the glasses so that okay. that doesn't get mixed up with your recycling. All right, very nice. Yeah. Well, you know how many glasses I have. I, I, I don't need to. I'm surprised need you don't have another. 20 pair of I should have one glasses. of those. You're right. <laughs> Let's go over to the Buckeye State for our first trending story where a teacher there could get fired. Why? Well, she called out sick for two days. Okay. Did you ask why? Well, that's because she was caught enjoying a concert. Oh, boy. Eileen Washburn, she's an English teacher, placed on unpaid leave as the school district investigates whether she violated her <laughs> teacher's union contract to, attention, to attend rather a concert. Washburn allegedly quote, falsified sick leave oh. to attend a concert out of state. She told several colleagues where she was going. The teacher is also accused of not providing information to school officials when asked during a meeting after her trip was discovered. Now, along with violating the teacher's contract, Washburn was found in violation of other policies that included a violation of sick leave and staff ethics. And what I say is, man, our teachers are, you know, they, they, uh, they're not getting paid well. Yeah. They put up, they, they're, they're babysitting kids, really, a lot mm -hmm. of times. And, you know, they're, they're given so much crap already at school. Yeah. Well, you know what? Who cares? You know, you, you're giving yeah. those days. I, I can understand, like, you know, d d if, d if it was like a critical time meeting, like it was a, a test, aptitude yeah. test time of year. I don't know if that was the case or not. Yeah. But you know, would they have let her off in a way? Maybe they should give teachers an option to be able to have like days for free. Yeah, you wonder, do they get personal days? Can they put personal in for days. vacation time? I mean, I know they have a different schedule where they work, you know, nine months out of the year for the school year and then they've got the summer off, but you'd think that there would be some way to work around that or so that she wouldn't have to call in sick and lie about going to the concert because I think that's where the issue I, is. I, and I agree, and yeah. I understand, and if you pull back on any other industry, I think I would have an issue with sure. this, but I also think that teachers, are, you know, sometimes they don't know. Maybe 100%. her signals, look, I had, a, I had to clear my head. Well, I'm 
yeah. up. Now I, and then you would, I could see people, like, well, then people would take advantage of that. Yeah. And you have to govern it. But um, And maybe she wasn't forthright. Maybe that's the reason why. But I think there should be a little bit of like, okay, you can remain a teacher because we need teachers 100%, so bad. 100%, yes. But yeah. maybe just say, all right, you're going to have to come in and do Saturday detention. Uh, <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. you're going to have to make up those days somehow. You're going to have to monitor you, study hall. The study hall, right. You get me. Do we know what concert she went to? No, was but it that's like, a good question. Was it like a Juggalos concert or something? <laughs> that awesome? like the, no. the ICP, was that maybe what they were May, like? maybe, That would be cool. Maybe there was something associated with the concert that was a little questionable. Oh, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, we don't know that particular part of the story, but right. yeah. Even we'll still, you know, I would love actually to hear from our viewers yeah. here because, you know, where are you at on this? Should she get, uh, be fired or let go or should, you know, what should happen to her? You can drop us an email at flashadailyflashshow.com. Calling out sick, getting caught, going to a concert. What do you think? Right. Uh, workers in California may legally be allowed to disregard messages from their boss after the workday ends. The pressure to respond to work messages after hours has rapidly increased in recent years, especially as remote work during the pandemic blurred the lines between work and personal life. If the right to disconnect law is passed, it would require a public or private employer to establish a workplace policy that provides employees the right to disconnect from communications from the employer during non-working hours, except as specified. This means that except in cases of emergency or for scheduling, workers would have the right to ignore communications from the employer during non-working hours. Now, if the employer violates the rule, they could face a civil penalty of at least 100 dollars. California would become the first state in the country to consider such a law. France was the first to enact a right to disconnect law back in 2017. Man, you know, you think about it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. It's like, well, you're getting paid nine to five. Or if you're mm -hmm. an hourly employee, I get that. If you're a salaried employee, you kind of, th that's, I think, where the gray line comes. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting text messages or emails at two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But what about six o'clock? Where does the line start and that sort of thing? And there's different industries that you have to be available. Yeah, and the news industry is one in particular that, you know, when things, when big stories happen, usually you got to have your phone gotta and you got to be available. I, I was covering an election and there were some questions with regard to the results. So I ended up going home and I was going to come back the next morning to anchor the morning news. Mm -hmm. Well, I woke up and I had 40 missed calls <laughs> on my phone because I set my phone to vibrate. Right, but 40 missed should, calls though, from yeah. one person <laughs> for something that really was not necessary. So, I mean, I get it. I get the frustration that some employees feel. And, and maybe when you're hired, uh, that yeah. is that is said, meaning you go, all right, um, you, this is a job that's, you know, it's a nine to five, let's say, whatever, right. but we're also, we need you to do this. Yes. And if it's not worth the, that, then you go, well, I, I can't take the job. Or you just say, I can do that except on Thursdays, or I can't do that. Yeah. There's exceptions altogether. I, I can see how, because we are in a world where mm -hmm. you have to have this and when and emergencies pop up, but you know, until there's a law, that That's it's always going to be pushed further when you're, you're going to get those yeah. 40 calls in the middle of the night. <laughs> you are. Well, the bougiest bite in New York is a $28 single chicken nugget, but it comes with a Lux twist. It's loaded with a spoonful of golden caviar. Oh. The nugget is the most talked about Jeez. menu item at a new fried chicken spot in the Flatiron District. A 30-year-old customer says it tastes like an upscale McDonald's nugget, and the caviar adds just the right amount of saltiness. Many diners order it along with a glass of $48 champagne to wash it down. The caviar nugget is the latest menu item in the city to mix high-priced fish eggs with everyday food. The restaurant has some 400 varieties of champagne to go with the fried chicken. <laughs> it's one of the largest champagne collections in New York City. Well, don't think I'd do it. Uh, yeah, even if it was the price, you, you put fish eggs on, on something, it's not going to happen. And you know, it, it, it seems like it's a draw because now we're talking about this yeah, place and that sort of thing. Sure. How many people order it is probably another right. thing as well. Yeah. So Chick-fil-A uh, is just as good. 100%. If not better, Yes, one would argue. And, and if you want fish eggs, yeah, throw them on your, your Chick-fil-A uh, nuggets. I'd rather have the avocado lime sauce with my chicken nuggets. Oh, that does sound it's good. really good. I like that. Conjoined twins, Abby and Brittany Hensel, they want the world to know that they are here to stay, like it or not. Mm -hmm. The 34-year-old twins have responded to news of Abby's marriage. And there's been a lot of recent attention on the twins after a clip from one of the wedding guests resurfaced on Facebook showing an intimate moment from the ceremony. Now, in the video, the couple danced and kissed at the wedding reception at which Abby and her sister wore an all-white sleeveless bridal gown. 
Abby and Brittany, they live in Minnesota, have largely stayed away from the spotlight since their eight-episode 2012 TLC reality show, Abby and Brittany. The program tracked their everyday lives as they wrapped up college and entered adulthood. Wow. They were born as conjoined twins, and their condition is very rare. That's when two heads on a single body, and they all share one system. They have their own heart, brain, lungs, stomachs, and kidneys. They share organs, including the liver and the bladder. Wow. And uh, an amazing that, you know, that science and they're able to work together. Yeah. Marriage is one of those things, I guess, yeah. they, can, they get as Good well. For them. Good for them. Time for our round table. Can you imagine being married couple and your spouse says, hey, listen, we ain't engaging in any little hanky-panky. I want my own room. <laughs> oh, well, what boy. would you say to that? That's actually the situation that Ryan Crawley is in after asking his wife to start using separate bedrooms since they already have separate bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But his wife drew the line and said, no way. Mm -hmm. It might sound a little weird to some folks. All right, but many couples actually across the country are sleeping separately under the same roof. Jackson, how do you think that mainly this choice impacts relationship dynamics as well as quality of life? Gosh, I think I think couples do the separate bedrooms for separate reasons, but I think um, intimacy is still important, whether it's cuddling or whether it's quote unquote the hanky panky. So I think that there's something that needs to be discussed there. Now, if it's a snoring issue or a yeah. health issue or a scheduling issue where you're up at midnight and your spouse doesn't get up until 8 a.m., that makes sense to me. But just because you're maybe going the separate ways, I think that only adds more distance in the relationship. I think so. And it's one of those where, you know, traditionally, we always think you're supposed to sleep in the same bed. Matt, yeah. your thoughts on this? Look, my parents were married for 37 years and for about 30 of that, they lived on separate ends of the house. Now, my dad had a non-normal job, so he was, you know, coming home at 3, 4 in the morning, and he snored like a bear. But, I mean, they were married for 30, 37 years, so, I mean, it worked yeah. out for them. It's completely it, opposite ends of the house. It, apparently, uh, it does that. It, it also means, though, if uh, one of person is in the other person's bedroom, it's a reason why they're there. So, I mean, maybe that's a, <laughs> like a visual cue, I guess you could say. Um, I, I could see, like, if you, let's say you had a spare bedroom, in the house and it you know there's times where like you know i have these allergy of fits that i have or, or i can't sleep at night and i want to watch tv so i can go to sleep you know getting up and going to the other room um but there is something always different i know liza tells me he's like oh, i miss you being next to yeah. you and i wake up in the morning so i could totally get that however as as both of you said if it works for the couple you know who's for us to, to judge yeah. right I mean, what's different than two couples living long distance relationships in separate cities, right? If they're That's married and one lives in New York and one lives in LA or whatever, and you're technically in different bedrooms, right? Separate, definitely separate bedrooms in that case. And, um, yeah, but Matt, when you got scared at night, whose room did you go into? I went to my mom. My dad was, I, I, let, I let him do whatever he was doing in that room. I, I didn't go in there a lot. Oh, boy. All right. Bobby's smart. Actually, really yeah. smart. All right. Thank you, uh, guys. And, of course, we'd love to hear what you have to think on this subject. We'd love for you to drop us an email. Go to our website, dailyflashshow.com, or you can just drop us an email. Just a simple flash at dailyflashshow.com. Let us know your thoughts. Separate bedrooms. Good idea. Do you at your house have your own bedroom? And is it working out great? We'd love to hear your thoughts and we'll share with it with our national audience right here on Daily Flash. What else we got? Mitch, thank you. We have got to talk about groceries and shopping right now. Skyrocketing inflation is making life difficult for millions of Americans across the country. So where does it hurt the most? Well, the trip to the grocery store is what most people say. Business Insider's Jennifer Streaks is here with some tips on how to save some money on your next trip to the supermarket. Jennifer, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> so for most everyone, the sticker shock when it comes to buying food at the grocery store is no joke. Even the CEO of Kellogg is saying more families are turning to cereal for dinner. How can we save money on groceries? Well, the first thing you've got to do is take advantage of all coupons, sales and discounts. Most grocery stores, they have a weekly circular. They're gonna tell you in advance what is on sale make sure you grab that. If you can download coupons to your phone, if you have a grocery store that uh, takes advantage of loyalty points and sends you coupons to your phone, take advantage of that. Shop all sales, discounts, back to school sales, stock up sales, fall, winter sales, every sale, take advantage of it. We know one, we know one of the biggest uh, tips is never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. <laughs> what are some other common mistakes people make when grocery shopping? Make a list 
first. Do not just go to the grocery store empty handed. Everything on the shelves are, go are going to look great. So make sure you have that list. Stick to the list. No impulse buying. Know the, um, you know, the, the aisles that are right close to the cash register. They put those there because that's for the impulse shopper, the person who's going to buy that extra stick of gum or that magazine or that hand sanitizer that they don't need. Make sure you make a list and stick to it. And what about shopping just on the outside perimeter? Isn't that one of those things where they say, if you just stick to the outside perimeter of the grocery yeah. store, that'll save you some cash? <laughs> make sure that you do that. Stick to the outside <laughs> perimeter. Also shop maybe a little below eye level. They put everything that's higher priced right at eye level. They want that to be the first thing that you see. So maybe the aisle down or even the aisle that's right above the floor. Okay, yes. shop there for some of your cheaper items. Yeah, they always get me on those end caps too when they have those fancy displays. What other impacts exactly. would you say technology will have on shopping habits? I think that it's going to make it easier if you want to use it to save money because you can now look in advance to see what's on sale. You can shop your pantry first, which is what we should all be doing. Shop your pantry first and really see what items you need and then go online, use your phone to say, are these items on sale? Can I find a coupon? Can I drive a little further out? Can I use a farmer's market? to get the discounts and the sales. It really takes some strategy. One last quick question for you. What about a lot of these food delivery services? Mm -hmm. Are they saving you money? They only save you money if you use them. I used one of those services and it was so much food, so much of it spoiled in my refrigerator. I didn't even use it to its full capacity. So only use those services if it's really going to work for you, if it's going to work for your family or your household, because they're expensive. Excellent advice. Great information, Jennifer. For more information and money-saving tips on grocery shopping, check out our website at dailyflashshow.com. You can also find more information on Jennifer at businessinsider.com. We'll post this complete interview with all the grocery, grocery shopping tips that you need the next time you make your way to the store. Stay with us. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Now, look, we all know that uh, electric cars run off batteries, but what happens to those batteries when they're all worn out? In today's Car Smarts, Lauren Fix, the car coach, gives us the ins and outs of car battery recycling. The Biden administration awarded a $2 billion green energy loan to a Nevada company that recycles electric vehicle batteries. According to reports, recycling venture Redwood Materials, which was founded in 2017 by Tesla former chief technology officer Jeffrey Straubel, who secured the $2 billion conditional loan from the Energy Department's Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Program, a tongue twister, according to the Associated Press. The company said it is planning to build a $3.5 billion battery materials campus in Ridgefield, Nevada, that will recycle, refine, and remanufacture cathode and anode materials, such as nickel, cobalt, lithium, and copper. The Ridgefield facility aims to begin recycling late next year and ramp up component manufacturing capacity to 100 gigawatt hours by 2025, enough to supply battery materials for more than a million electric vehicles that the company stated. The Ridgefield facility is expected to supply battery materials to Ford Motor, SK in Kentucky, Toyota Motor in North Carolina, and Volvo and Envision in South Carolina as part of their expansion. Redwood Materials claims that its battery recycling facility in California has been a success. Redwood Materials is in the lithium-ion battery recycling business, and they are in the process of discovering the best way to reuse the materials inside batteries that are no longer serviceable to make new batteries without having to mine and process new materials. A great idea. Over the past year, it has collected used lithium ion and nickel metal hydride battery packs from Toyota, Ford, Volvo, and Volkswagen, as well as from auto dismantling companies. Redwood has accepted 1,268 battery packs from 19 separate battery electric vehicles and hybrid models, which presents challenges to recyclers as every pack is designed differently and cell formats are different as well. 
Redwood Materials was able to identify and recover end-of-life packs totaling approximately half a million pounds of materials. High-quality battery materials for anodes and cathodes are already being produced there and are being supplied to battery cell manufacturers in the U.S. The company states that lithium ion represented the majority of the material types collected and they expect it will continue to grow as it is now the only type of vehicle battery on the market. As of today, the recycling process is already profitable for smaller batteries such as those found in consumer devices and production scrap. Redwood also accepts batteries from old phones, laptops, and alike. Battery recycling is expected to become increasingly important in coming years as EV battery packs start reaching end of life. The Inflation Reduction Act tied to the EV tax credit to battery source requirements, which stipulates that critical minerals must be extracted and processed and recycled in the U.S. or in a country the U.S. has free trade with, which would be Mexico or Canada, makes this growing area for investors. The person who gets this resolved will be the next trillionaire for sure. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Hey guys, it's Furry Friends time, and it's already March, which means it's very close to spring for most of the country, so you have to get your pet ready to go outside and enjoy that fresh air, and you have to brush them. So here are a few tips to get them ready for, you know, especially you human dog owners. First, you have to start by brushing them. The beginning of spring is when most dogs start shedding their warm coats for their summer ones. The best way to help them transfer into the spring is to start brushing them regularly. Next up, if you don't use flea, tick, or heartworm medicines year round, now's the time of year you'll want to start back up as the warm as the weather warms up. Not only are they spending more time outdoors, but the pests come back out too, so it's easier to prevent them from getting it than to get rid of them. And while you're cleaning the rest of your house, make sure you're cleaning your pet's stuff too. Their beds, toys, anything they walk on or put their mouths on, basically, a good way to do this is to wash their stuff with a mild detergent or some vinegar, and that should be enough to get rid of the fur, dander, and the bacteria from their bedding. Now, you're also gonna wanna check your yard, especially for your dog owners or even your cat owners who let them roam outside, check your yard. Those of you up north where ice and snow build up over the winter, check your yard for hazards, inspect the fence for any holes or weak points so they don't get out, and see if there's any holes that develop in your yard so they don't fall into it. Here in Florida, it's always good to check for branches that may have fallen in the area your dog is familiar with because they may come around the corner and hurt themselves if they're used to a normal routine. Now, it's not only is spring a good time for cleaning, but it's also a good one to handle any of their paperwork that may have taken a back seat during the winter. Do a quick check on your pet's documentation to make sure all of their info is up to date, including tags, vaccines, and microchips. And lastly, ease into the exercise. If your dog's been locked up all winter and you've only let them go outside for a tinkle, it's probably not best to take them on a three mile hike. So make sure you build them up for that. So it's all good stuff to make sure your pets are spring ready and that's that includes you cat owners out there like me we got to make sure they're ready to get out there too mitch are you getting your cat your pets ready my cat wants to jump outside anytime the door opens so i totally agree everything you said there more flash coming up after this this is daily flash with your host andrea jackson and mitch english trending news and entertainment this is daily flash Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily <laughs> Flash. Looks like we are getting some uh, shows that came from movies to oh. uh, the Amazon. Uh, okay. Legally Blonde, it looks like they're gonna have their, she's gonna have her own television series, L is, and it's gonna be EP'd of course by Reese, Reese Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Okay. Her production company, Hello Sunshine, is involved in this as well. This is all actually coming about because uh, Amazon bought uh, MGM. Oh. And those are MGM properties. And so what they're saying is that, look, we have Amazon. We got to put something on Amazon. And so they went through all their libraries. Like, what can we turn into TV series? Uh, Robocop might be getting a TV really? series. Ooh. As well as Barbershop. I think oh, I'd love those are two. I, would love. I think great. Robocop. I'm Robocop. surprised. Robocop. I'm surprised that it hasn't yeah, been. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Horrible, I but. am too. I, I, want, I want the original Robocop, though. Yeah. I'll buy that for a dollar. You know, not the, the second one. No, I don't, want, I don't want the cyborg one. I want the, like. 
the, the first bad one. '80s version where it's you know, yes. you clearly can't run or anything. It, where it's com yeah, it's supposed to be Detroit and they're all driving around in like uh, Ford Tauruses, <laughs> and I think they actually shot it in Dallas, but they said yeah. it was the it was like a weird, but it had that feel to it all together. <laughs> If you want to have some fun, watch yeah. RoboCop because there are so many bad acting scenes in there. There's that one where he shoots the girl. Between, that, between okay, the leg, yeah. It's so bad it's good. <laughs> it's, yes, 100%. So then is this being developed for Amazon Prime series TV specifically? Series. Okay. Right. So, so we'll only be able to get it off on of Amazon. Amazon Prime. Uh, Got it. And, they, and like I said, you have a place where you want pe more and more people to come where you yep. have to have more and more content. And they're like, okay, what can we do with the franchises yeah. that we do own now? So okay. that would be interesting. We go now to Ohio where a high school teacher there could actually be fired. Why? Well, she called out sick for two days. And why did she call out sick? Well, she said she had to go and check out a concert live. Eileen Washburn, she's an English teacher, placed on unpaid leave as the school district investigates whether she violated her teacher's union contract to attend that concert. Washburn Come allegedly on, falsified sick leave to attend a concert out of the state. She likes to put socks on her hands. Uh, she told several colleagues where she was going. So she's like, look, I'm going to a concert. I'm calling out sick. Right. The teacher is also accused of not providing information to school officials when asked during a meeting after her trip was discovered. Now, along with violating the teacher's contract, Washburn was found in violation of other policies that also included a violation, violating of sick leave and staff ethics. Hmm. Uh, it, it does bring up a good point, but it's also a job that is thankless and most yeah. and high stress and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Seems like I wish that they would like give more personal days for teachers yeah. or at least you know like hey we're going to give you two you get your birthday off you can use it anytime you want you get one day off where you don't have to tell us what's going I on. guess the question is did she put in to have those days off as vacation di days and got denied and so she decided well I'll just call out I'll just call anyway. out as a sick yeah. Um, was she not allowed to have personal days? Because I know in a lot of these jobs, you can have a personal day if you need it. And oftentimes people will do something that makes them feel better. And obviously this concert was part of that. And there's deal. research that shows yeah. those uh, companies that actually offer the, uh, the personal days, they have happier employees because they realize, you know, the sickness could be, you know, you might be going through something yeah. at home. Uh, yeah. And that's, what, that, that's not to justify, like, what she did if they lying asked her and lying about it. Calling out sick. But apparently she did tell people what she was doing, but then she said, she, oh, I'm just going to use this as a sick day, which I think you should be able to. I, I guess that maybe that's where the problem is. There wasn't really much discretion. Maybe she, maybe some people thought she was flaunting the fact that she called out that's sick and she point. went to a concert, whereas they probably had to bring in a substitute teacher for the class that day. So that cost the district money. Um, but if maybe she'd been a little bit more discreet, it maybe would have been less I'm thinking... Controversial? I'm thinking so. And then it probably was raised by maybe a jealous coworker of and course. that sort of thing. Well, this, yeah. this joke comes in from uh, one of our camera guys. Maybe you're just sick of them kids. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The sick. You're sick of them kids. kids see do that. I see it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they can, they can do that uh, uh -huh. all together. And, and listen, if you think about it, probably the last concert you went to was a band concert at that high school. And <laughs> yeah. let me tell you, they ain't fun to go to. <laughs> Poor things. I want to go to a I just want to know concert. what concert. Like, I try to look it up. I can't find what concert. Like, I want to know, was it like a like a rowdy thing? Or was it like, you know. I, I want to say like Joel. I want to say Taylor Swift. I want to say something like yeah. that. Yeah. But all I know is if it was, let's say, Bruce Springsteen, let's yeah. just say. I would I would reach out to that teacher and and say hey man thanks for coming to the concert yeah. and give him something nice you know thanks yeah. for risking your job for me but I'm guessing it wasn't something that I don't high think profile so. <laughs> it was like Matt said the insane clown it was pop. the ICP <laughs> she was a juggalo man. <laughs> <laughs>
Indeed. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned fun and it, there was some, some fun in there and we were talking about the blood and the, uh, and to me, it was like a little over the top, but Matt and Tyler both said, yeah, this is uh, supposed to go, this is way too much. What's it like with the, working with all that blood around you? I'm so used to it by now. Really? Uh, yeah. I'm used to be, I'm used to being covered in blood and I, I kind of love it. Yeah. I, uh, I like I like the the look of it. I like the feel of it. I I think it's like I don't know. It's kind of cool that I get to do that. I I love the horror genre and all the crazy stuff that we get to do in the the special effects. Well, I'm glad you said that because you know you're also of course from Scream uh, Six. You play Sam Carpenter there with Radio Silence working. Was that kind of a big draw for you to do this movie? I mean, Matt and Tyler definitely were a big draw. Like, working with them is amazing. And I already know they're a guarantee. Like, they know what they're doing. They know the movie that they're going to make. And and you know that you're going to have a fun time on set with them. And that it's going to, like, everything is going to flow. And it's going to be amazing. Um, and obviously, like, I love vampires. I grew up watching vampire movies and monster movies. And so the opportunity to join, like something in that universe was a big, big draw for me. Okay, let's let's talk about your character. Okay, your character is named Joey, nickname. Nickname. But it's, all, but it's really like Anna. And my understanding, you had something to do with the name of the character. Am I right or wrong on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my character's name is Joey throughout the entire movie. But you learn her real name at some point, And it's like not a big deal. It's just like an, her name. And I really wanted it to be... Uh, and like a Dracula world Easter egg. And when the guys asked me like what the name could be, I really wanted it to be related to Dracula. And one of the, the characters is Lucy. And so I named her Ana Lucia after Lucy. And and cruz means cross in Spanish. And I wanted, an, I don't know, a, a, an... an a metaphor of like what you, you know, one of the things that technically, and not in our world, but a cross would deter a vampire. And so I wanted to give her kind of like that power in her name. I love that. And speaking of names, my, my understanding as well, your name, Melissa, is actually based, there's a little house on the prairie connection. Am I right on that? Yeah, too? yeah. My mom named me after her two favorite actresses that were from Little House on the Prairie. Um, there were both Melissa's. Yeah. Two of the little girls on that show were named Melissa. And so she basically, I think she like willed me into being an actress without knowing it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Final question. Vampires are real. What will you always keep with you? Wood steak, a mirror or garlic? Um, a wood steak. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I think after that. watching Abigail, you would agree. I, well, I, that's why you saw me shaking my head, because I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the same exact thing. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Of course, the movie is called Abigail. You want to check it out in theaters. Melissa Vieira, thank you so much. KSA Entertainment believes in our communities. We value those who have dedicated their lives to enrich our own. KSA Entertainment is proud to introduce our corporate initiative, KSA Cares. KSA Cares shines a light, gives a voice, and lends a helping hand through compelling awareness initiatives. From supporting veterans to environmental awareness, KSA Entertainment is proud to produce content supporting ways to help communities all across America. Our next guest is Haida Abeli, who has a new book out called You Got This, The Ultimate Career Guide for the Modern Professional. In the book, Haida addresses the challenges today's workforce is facing. Haida, welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you. So Happy the, to be here. The workplace has changed drastically in the last five to ten years. What are some of today's most common workforce challenges? Yes, there's a lot of pressure on employees today. Uh, most of this is due to the uh, increase in the pace of change at work. People need to be adaptive and resilient through all of that change. Expectations regarding productivity have increased. You know, we have an always on work culture. Uh, people are tethered to their smartphones. That can cause a blurring of the lines between people's personal and professional lives so they can struggle with work-life balance, boundaries, managing burnout and stress. Almost half of employees work remotely. 
or in a hybrid context. And there are upsides to that, but also downsides, social isolation, feeling invisible, feeling disconnected. It can be harder to advocate for yourself or get on the radar for a promotion. And then of course, there are the time eternal challenges of dealing with coworker dynamics, interacting with supervisors, uh, handling on the job conflict. And these can be really tough challenges. Maybe you uh, are in a conflict with a co Worker, or you're feeling marginalized, or your boss is abrasive, um, and there's less informal available to help people deal with those kinds of challenges. So they need help, uh, not just to survive at work, but to thrive. You say Gen Zers just entering the workforce are struggling the most. Yes, uh, Gen Zers struggle with engagement and motivation. Over half of uh, Gen Zers, the research shows, more than any other generation, are either ambivalent or disengaged at work. And that's a problem because we need to be engaged and motivated to do our best work. There can be communication challenges. A lot of what we do at work involves communication. And Gen Z grew up communicating via text and emojis to some extent. So <laughs> they can struggle with some of the complexities of face-to-face -face communication and social interaction at work just comes a little bit less naturally to them. Uh, Gen Zers who work remotely may not be getting the mentorship they need. It can be harder for them to network um, and be seen when they're remote. So and mentorship and, and networking are very important, especially early on in a career. And then remember too, that this generation was raised in an era of instant gratification. Yes. Think of all the social media likes and comments. And some Gen Zers can struggle with the realities of entry level positions, the routine nature of tasks, slower progression, lack of constant feedback. So those are some of the challenges that Z Gen Z struggles with. Yeah, I think there is like time management, there's boundaries, there's structure, all of that comes with learning to adapt in a work environment. And there's also a, a sense of entitlement. If you're just starting out in the workforce for this particular generation, they don't understand why they're not making the same amount of money as somebody who's worked there for 20 years, let's say. And constant urgency is also a big problem. What do you mean by this and how can we deal with it? Yeah, this is something that I hear a lot from people. Uh, they'll tell me, gosh, everything at work is a drill. And every email I receive from my boss need ASAP in the email subject line. Not all tasks can and should be urgent. So there's a lot of false urgency in the workplace today. You can't always be expected to strap on that superhero cap at cape and save the day. So what I suggest is press the pause button ask to meet with your boss. You need to shine a light on this ugly underbelly of constant urgency. What is that? Burnout, decreased work quality, not focusing enough on the really critical work. So you need to highlight the negative business consequences of constant urgency. And you need to verify the true urgencies of tasks. So how do you do that? You help your boss uh, find a structure for better prioritization so that you can that true urgency. Ask probing questions. For example, what happens if this isn't done by tomorrow? What is the actual business damage that will occur? Or what business downside if we rush this task? Not every important task is urgent. So it's critical, and we tend to conflate the two. So it's critical really to get to the true urgency of tasks. The goal is uh, to avoid a power struggle with your boss, but also to commit energy to truly urgent tasks. Haida, great information. To get a copy of Haida's book, you got this. Please visit haida.abelli.me, or you can find the book at all major online book retailers. Mm. Let's jump into Daily Flash Deals. This is where we share some really great finds at exclusive prices and start shopping right now. Just scan the QR code you mm -hmm. see on your screen or you can visit dailyflash.com. Lifestyle expert Elise Ivey joins us now mm. to give us all the deets. Hey there, Elise. Hi, Elise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to so you. Good to see you. This is cool stuff. Thank I'm you excited. so much. Well, let me ask you something. Have you ever been in a situation where you go to take a picture and all of a sudden oh, you're no. about to get that memory, mm -hmm. you click and it says <laughs> your phone is... Oh. Oh, you get right. to to make That's room. right. You have to delete. You have to pay for expensive cloud storage. Mm -hmm. But we have the solution for you today. It's called memory. This device right here will hold 64 gigabytes, which is equivalent wow. to 15,000 photos oh or up to six hours <laughs> yeah. of video. Incredible, right? 
All oh you have to do is plug this into any of your devices that you're wanting to transfer or free up space from, okay? So I just plugged it in here right to my iPhone. I can now transfer all of those photos. And you're thinking, wait, 15,000 photos, that's yes. gonna take a lot of battery time. Yes. What's going to happen to my pictures if my phone dies? Well, it includes a cord, so you have a pass-through charge technology, so you have so much peace of mind. Wow. Lots of great colors to choose from here. We've got your digital memories completely taken care of. But let's talk about those physical memories, sure. right? Our photo albums, the boxes and boxes of photo <laughs> albums. Yeah. In my case, this right. is a wedding card from my Aunt Aww. Judy. I love to keep my cards, my birthday cards, but of course, they can get ruined, or this is mm. obviously causing a lot of clutter. Mm -hmm. So with memory, there is a scan technology built right into the app. You're just gonna hold it over the document that you want, an mm. auto crop feature happens. Oh, nice. You're gonna get colorization filters if you want, and all of that is included right here. And today, are you ready for this? Yeah. $100 <gasps> off. A 50% oh. savings. Holy Can you believe it? 50% savings for peace of mind. Love that. And you know, easy to find stuff too, because I know yes. like when you look for physical stuff, it's like, where did you find where it? it? Where you is it? Where is it? You know where it's at. Exactly. Love this idea. This Great is stuff. Terrific. Very really good. Cool. Very, very, very cool. At least thank you. And I love all the different adapters That's too. That's right. For all your different work. devices, just choose your favorite color. And it does come with the great little mm. safekeeping box. I love a good matchy match <laughs> color scheme. <laughs> thank you, Elise so Thank much you. to take advantage of this incredible deal. Scan the QR code or head to dailyflash.com. Welcome back to Daily Flash. When her only daughter goes off to college, an empty nest mother gets stuck taking care of her daughter's heartbroken ex-boyfriend who she can't stand. <laughs> this is today's must-watch movie, Suze. Wakey, wakey, little graduate. I'm so proud of you. You're my everything. Morning, Suze. Please don't call me Suze. Sorry, Suze. Get what you see in this guy. I love him and he worships me. But honey, you're starting university. He's starting nothing. Happy grad, everyone. We're the emotional morons. Hi. Baby, I'm gonna miss you so hard. Wait, what? It's Take your it. favorite. I, I love you so much, sweetie. Do you feel like you're gonna throw up too, Suze? <laughs> Hi, honey. Calling to see how you're settling in. Hi, honey. Just checking to see if you got my care package. Me again. Hope you're still alive. Oh, I just feel like I'm losing her. You know? gotta see this as a whole new beginning. You're going through perimenopause. Think of it as things starting to wind down inside. Yeah, what if I don't want them to wind down inside? Gage jumped off the water tower. Wait, what? Can you go check on him? Suze, is that you? Hey, hello, Gage. Dad, this is Suze. Oh, your precious daughter. Yeah, she dumped his ass. She did? I was hoping that you could watch him until I get back. Me. Hi, Suze. This is going to be sick. You can stay in here. Nice. A lot of good times in here, Suze. Wake up. You're coming to work with me. Yo, good morning. Susan? Oh, hi, Paul. Who's your friend? This is my daughter's ex-boyfriend. Slash future husband. What the hell, Mom? Why is Gage staying with you? Sweetie, I have left you several messages. Hey, Suze, you okay? I'm taking you out tonight. Why would you bring me here? I thought it'd be good for you. So how do you and Gage know each other? He used to date my daughter. Ooh, look at you go! And I'm just trying to keep him alive. This one uh, goes out to somebody very special. Oh, dear God. He's a really good kid, Rick, and he just needs someone to just look out for him. If you like him so much, then why don't you keep him? Sweetie, I just wanted to see you, okay? Okay, well, I don't want to see you. Why do you let her treat you like garbage when you treat her like gold? Because she's the only thing that I have in my life, and I am terrified of losing her. You're the boss, shoes. Looks fun for sure. Something to check out. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Be good, everybody. Go to dailyflashshow.com for more information on anything you've seen on the show.